Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Uh, I promised today that I would talk about the problem with deer. Uh, we do have a not nearly the problem that squirrels and raccoons uh, afford you at your bird feeders, but deer are a major urban wildlife damage problem for a lot of people. So, and there are several people who have voiced, you know, and had we've had to help deal with deer over the years. So it's a good topic to to address and and. I know there's lots of jokes and things about, oh, you know, hunt them and whatever. Well, in urban settings, they, they, hunting deer is very uh, limited and uh, it, it's not usually possible. And most people who feed birds love the deer, you know, obviously, and they, and, but then they want to know how to deal with them and still fe feed their birds and keep them from eating all of their bird seed. So um, they, I was going to address the types of problems we tend to have with them and then the potential solutions with them. The first I was going to talk about was actually them bending poles. Um, the, the, I, a raccoon's not heavy enough, one raccoon's not heavy enough, and squirrels usually aren't heavy enough to bend a pole. But a deer, they'll rub up against poles so the cheaper and, and smaller shepherd hooks uh, can be really vulnerable to, to deer and, and, and pushing against them and bending them. And another thing that can happen is a deer can jump up and get its hoof on like a tray and, and then literally by its weight bend the pole over. And that is certainly that, that something that is possible. And with that, you know, part of the solution, of course, is buying more stout poles, but also we're going to talk about height a lot, and that is six feet. The, the reason I'm standing under this feeder right over the top of my head is I'm six foot one. So to illustrate, that's about how high a feeder needs to be to keep a deer from actually getting into it, either with its uh, putting a hoof on it or just licking the feeder with his tongue. Um, uh, if you saw the picture I posted yesterday uh, on you on Facebook, it was a picture of a deer on his uh, on her hind legs, and and when a deer gets up uh, on its hind legs, it, it's six feet it's about where it can reach. And that's why if you know what a browse line is in a forest where there's cattle and things like that, they eat every bit of vegetation they can up to the top of their browse line. Well, with deer, six feet is the number you got to remember. So the, the pole systems, you know, more stout poles. Bird baths. People say, "Well, they drink all the water on my bird bath at night," and I believe me, that, you know, I'm a victim of that too. In the past, I've gotten up in the middle of the night and looked out the window and seen the deer out there just licking all the water out of your bird bath. But no, obviously that's an easy solution. You just pour more bird water in the bird bath the next morning. But what most people are concerned when it comes to that issue is if the water is they drink all the water out of my bird bath. Whenever, the, and especially in the winter, a heated bird bath, is it going to burn up my bird bath, the ice, or my bird bath? Or is it any danger to other animals or to myself uh, if there's no water in it? And the answer there is no. Uh, like I said, I hate calling them heaters, bird bath heaters. They're really de-icers. Their job is to keep the water unfrozen. It's not to heat it like a jacuzzi. So it's not a heating element to that sense where it gets hot enough to be dangerous. So uh, you drink, if they drank all the water out of your heated bird bath, it's not an issue. So that uh, you just need to pour, pour more water in it. But seed, how do you keep bird, the deer out of your bird seed? Because deer love your bird seed. And they also love your landscaping. Deer are not grazers, deer are browsers. And that means that they, they're adapted to browsing on the ends of limbs and, and twigs uh, and shrubs and trees and for browsing on that and can really eat a lot of woody, uh, actually, vegetation and, and still survive with it. But they will lick the bird seed out of your bird feeders, as the, the picture that was on the internet yesterday shows. Um, so to avoid that issue, getting your feet, your bird feeders mounted six feet up in the air. Now, the other part of that is, uh, I know people right away go, well, I can't reach a bird feeder if that's high, if it's that high. And that I understand. That, but you can always use a reach device, the type of device that will help you reach your bird feeder and get it off of the pole. So that will allow people that can't reach that high to be able to get their feeders down. And it's just a simple vice, it's just a little simple hook system here that 
uh, feet inside of a PVC pipe or a little metal pole, and then you can reach and get your feeders off of there without having to worry about the um, the height being too much for you. So keeping the seed off the ground, trays are wonderful, and that keeps them from uh, getting into that. Now, if it, it, if they're not drawn to it on the ground, chances are they might not find it in your bird feeders. But if you have another pole system, like a one inch diameter pole like this, that you want to get up higher, then we have, you can get extensions for the poles. So this, this bird feeder can be mounted with an extension on it. So this gets this up again up to that six feet where you belong and they're different height extensions so you can get your feeder up that high and this one is going to be a little more challenging to fill if you're up that high but on a vertical pole system you can figure out about six feet where you need to be hanging from tree limbs same thing get those uh, branch hooks up about six feet decks are very safe you know your, your deers aren't going to be able to usually reach that high so you feeding from your deck is another safety where you under your eave or your house is generally very safe to keep the deer out so there are some ways to do that please don't intentionally feed deer uh, this is from the conservation department whom i used to work for you don't want to attract a, a, a urban wildlife up to you because they will destroy your your landscaping and your neighbor's landscaping plus a lot of people want to feed them too rich of food uh, they buy things called like deer corn which is molasses coated deer um, uh, uh, deer corn and it and it's too rich for the deer system so it can actually harm deer in the winter but their their winter they literally physiologically change their digestive system changes in the winter so that they can survive off of very plain food like those browsing on tree limbs and things very woody vegetation so a rich uh, a very sugar-based uh, introduction into that system can overpower them and be bad for deer so don't intentionally defeat deer they're believe me they're fine they can find food on their own uh, and it may we may feel sorry for them but believe me they have adapted to live in this area for a long long time and they can deal with that the last thing i'm going to tell you should recommend that you can try although i've not seen any real studies on it but um, the the hot the habanero oil the sizzle and heat seed and the uh, the flaming score additive to bird seed with the deer's tongue they should not like this so that that can be that can dissuade them as well so that's worth giving a try if you know the reach and everything you know, it doesn't work for you so keep them out of reach you know hanging in all the other type environments like decks and and tree limbs and things like that but remember six foot is the rule and that should take care of your deer issues so thanks for the idea for the program give us a like give us a share send an idea for future programs and until then come on let's talk birds would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.